Hey there, everyone. So I wanted to go live to teach you guys a thing or two about uh, wild harvesting edible and medicinal plants that you ought to be able to hopefully find in your area. Uh, keep in mind that I'm in Northern California, so some of the things that are available to me in my area might not be available to you. But my goal with this is to hopefully inspire you to take a look around uh, at your natural environment and to see all of the incredible things that can be had from the, the landscape around you. Uh, so I've studied herbalism. I've taken several classes and courses in herbalism, but I am not a certified herbalist at this point. So please take what I say with a grain of salt as well. <laughs> Do your own research uh, and also beware that there are a lot of plants that I might be showing you that have look-alike plants out there uh, that possibly could be poisonous. So you want to do your due diligence to look at your uh, plants that are available to you and do some research as to whether or not those are in fact uh, the same plants that I'm referencing and if it's safe for you to consume. So first things first, we are just stepping right outside my front door and I already see a bunch of medicinal plants. Uh, we don't spray our property and I encourage you to forage somewhere where you know that they're not spraying either. Uh, because while all of these medicinal plants are incredibly valuable, uh, it kind of sucks if you're eating something that has soaked up through its root system a bunch of glyphosate or Roundup. Um, and it looks like it's starting to rain, so I'm not sure how long this will be. I'll try to tough it out. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> just bear with me. Uh, so first things first, let's see. I'm going to turn the camera around. Cool. So the first thing we have here is cleavers. Cleavers, which you see right here. This can be used as a means to help clear your lymphatic system. So your lymphatic system is basically like your sewer system of your body. And it be can become, um, it can become slow and stagnant just because of the way we are as human beings today. With the amount of toxins that we're seeing in our environment, those that we're consuming, and how sedentary we've become. So cleavers is a plant that can be used here. Sorry. Um, so cleavers is a plant that can be used to help clean your lymphatic system. So with everything going on with this COVID-19, it's not necessarily recommended that you go and do a really in-depth kind of detox at this point because you want to do stuff that's going to help uh, sustain your um, your immune system but you can do very light detoxes at this time and cleavers is something that is very valuable uh, to help to detox your lymphatic system to help with the stagnation. So let me show you how the number one way I identify cleavers aside from, I mean, it, it stands out from a lot of other plants, but the main way that I identify cleavers is, okay, watch this. <laughs> it sticks, it sticks to your body, it sticks to your hair. There's little micro little things on it that causes it to stick to your body and stick to your clothes. So this is cleavers. You can eat it. <laughs> it's totally fine to eat. Um, but also, it's got a kind of a bitter taste to it. But with the cleavers, I actually make a cleavers tincture that I sell where you can take it and it'll help to clear your lymphatic system. So if you can't find cleavers around you, if they're not accessible, uh, I offer it in my shop. So let's go. Um, so we're going to take a walk around. So here we have some berry patches. There's no berries on them right now, but they grow. They're pretty invasive and uh, they're good. <laughs> um, of course, we have the underrated dandelion right here. 
So dandelion is incredibly powerful. It's not only edible, but of course it's medicinal as well. So you could take these leaves and you can add them to your salads. Um, can eat them straight from the ground. Totally fine. Um, another thing you can do is I have made um, dandelion flower fritters before which are really good. Um, but not only that, but you can pretty much use everything from a dandelion. You can use the root. The root is really good for helping with your liver, helping to clear stagnation and just like a faulty liver. <laughs> um, that's not really scientific, but whatever. But so dandelions are really awesome for just overall health. They're great to add to your salads. The dandelion fritters are amazing. Uh, dandelion tea is great too for your liver. So keep that stuff in mind. Something that I know is definitely, um, you, you can find it in California. I don't know if you can find it elsewhere, but this right here, this is called miner's lettuce. And so in the gold rush, miners came out here and they were, um, coming down with scurvy and so they started eating miner's lettuce and miner's lettuce is very high in vitamin C and it helps to fight scurvy so this is really good um, and you can add this to your salads um, the lettuce uh, it's really hearty really good it's not super bitter it's very palatable. Some people describe it as like the iceberg lettuce of medicinal or edible plants. But I think it's tasty. And as you can see here, I mean, there's so much of it here. And so you can identify it with almost as kind of like a lily pad kind of a leaf with a white flower growing out of it. So I know it's definitely available here in California. I don't know if you're going to be able to find that wherever it is that you live, but you can look into it. Um, <laughs> here we have our overrun garden right now. Um, let's see what else we can find. Um, so let's just take a walk because I know where I can find some other stuff. So this is our place. Um, we have three sheep as of right now. I know that one of our sheep is pregnant, so we'll be having other sheep, <laughs> which is really awesome. Here, I'll take you guys by our sheep so you can see them. Um, so, long story short, Max and I met about four years ago, and we could see the writing on the wall. We could see that society just wasn't really what we wanted. <laughs> we wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life and we wanted a slower pace of living. So we decided to rent this property that had farm space available so that we could buy our own chickens, buy our own sheep, and essentially do a test drive of the farm life to see if we were cut out for it, see how we wanted to do things. And you know what? It was probably the best thing that we've ever done because we are so prepared for something like this coronavirus. We're very isolated and insulated in this area in Northern California. There's a bunch of farmers, weed farmers, all kinds of different people who kind of are really grounded during this time. Mainly I feel because everybody is very self-reliant and they're well prepared for stuff. And you know, like our chickens are doing us a huge favor. We're getting about 12 dozen eggs from them a day. And not only that, but yesterday we sold four dozen, so we made some money during all of this. Um, let's see. So I'm getting close to some other goods. And also, it's really cool because our chickens are fed really well, and they're out foraging. I mean, here you can see a chicken. They're able to go out and roam around, and they're not stuck in a really awful coop where they can't get out and explore and forage 
chickens aren't meant to be just um, vegetarian and raised on feed. They're meant to explore. They're meant to eat um, lizards and all kinds of different stuff. So, okay, here is another one. So this is more medicinal. This is called mugwort. Uh, mugwort has these really interesting leaves, as you can see. And it has a really beautiful smell to it. It's a very identifiable smell. So if you ever smell mugwort, you'll know it when you identify it and find it out in nature. Essentially, mugwort is really cool um, because it helps with your dream state. So you can take a bunch of mugwort tea or you can dry mugwort and make it into like a sage or a smudge. Um, and burn it and essentially it can help uh, with lucid dreaming and having very vivid dreams. I know one of my Facebook friends here said that she had a mugwort stick, um, a dried mugwort stick where she had left it burning and didn't realize it uh, and it burned all throughout the night and her kids woke up in, in the morning and they were like, whoa, mom, I had such crazy dreams last night. And it was because of the mugwort, uh, because all of the smoke just like infiltrated their house. And it wasn't a bad thing. They had crazy dreams because of it and it was cool. But so mugwort is just cool for people who are looking to have like a cooler dream state. Um, so I think I got maybe one or two more plants here for you guys. Right now I am looking for plantain. So I know that plantain can be found in different regions. Um, plantain, I'm originally from Ohio and I know that there was plantain back in Ohio. So this is plantain. This is a plantain leaf. So there's two different types of plantain. There's this narrow leaf right here, which is what I most commonly find in Northern California. But I also know that um, back in Ohio, there was a broadleaf plantain. And the broadleaf, it creates a more fuller leaf. So this is very thin looking, and the broadleaf is much more thicker. So that, of course, can be found um, all across the U.S., I believe. And so just going off from my notes from when I took herbalism course, the narrow leaf plantain, uh, it is good for, let me see here. So it's edible and it is, so you want to, if you're going to eat this and add this to your salads, or you could also do uh, stir fries with this, you want the young plantain leaves because as it ages, it becomes kind of harder to chew and it's just not as palatable. So definitely when you're eating this, make sure that it's young. I mean, let me see. So it's a taste. <laughs> it's good. It's not bad, but it is a little, it's a little more chewy. So I would say this is a little bit older. Um, but so you can definitely add this to salads, add this to stir fries, but once it gets older, you can save it. You can make, um, you can make salves out of it. And so plantain is really good for rashes, bug bites, poison ivy, and poison oak. So you can take the plantain, uh, create a salve out of it, and then use it for those issues. Also, if you're just out in the wild and let's say you get a really bad sting or a bite or poison ivy, oh, poison ivy or poison oak rash, you could also make a, I think it's called a poultice, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So yeah, you take a, you take a plantain, chew up a little, spit it out. I know this is super sexy, but then wherever you got the rash, let's just say it happens to be on your face, you put it <laughs> on your face and you just let it sit there and it'll help you. It'll help to pull the infection or whatever out of it. Um, so yeah, that's plantain. Um, plantain... Let me see what else I have here in my notes. Um, oh, so broadleaf plantain. 
Give me a second. Oh, and I lost my notes. <laughs> um, give me one second. I lost my space. Okay. So also, it's cool to know that with plantain, and honestly, you should be able to find, <laughs> still got plantain on my face. Um, plantain, you should be able to find anywhere, for real. Um, and you should be able to find a lot of it. Like, I just, I keep running into it. Here's more of it. And you can tell by the veins, too. You see these veins on the leaf? They're all parallel, and they run from the bottom of the leaf all the way to the tip of the leaf. So that's plantain. Um, but so it, like I said, it's edible. It's good for extracting splinters, it helps with boils, helps with IBS, helps heal the gut. Um, and you can apply directly to for gangrene. So that's pretty interesting. So I wanted to share this with y'all because give me a second here and let me collect all my notes. Um, so yeah. I wanted to share this with you guys because I feel that we've become so disconnected from nature. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think that that was an accident. I think that there are certain powers in place that want us very disconnected from nature so that we don't understand all the healing capabilities of all the stuff surrounding us. At one time we were so in touch with nature and we didn't have this strong disconnect and somewhere our egos kind of took the took over and started running the show and we started to gain this idea that we're better than all of this. But if you do some research and you really start to understand things, you can see that <clears throat> I mean here it may not look quote unquote pretty right? Um, it's not like luxurious grass that you have to cut all the time, but there's like millions of dollars of natural medicine here. Medicine that even big pharma is synthesizing to get the compounds to create medicine. So we have medicine in our lawns, but we have this crazy idea that it's all weeds and that it's not pretty and it's not acceptable and your homeowners association won't let you grow weeds but there really is medicine out here uh and i wanted to share this medicine with you guys especially in a time like this not only just medicine but there's also like so many edible things out here that you could just pick straight from the lawn and eat and know that you're probably going to gain much more nutrients from these things than you are even gonna get from your store-bought items because all of our soil is completely void of nutrients. And so because of these practices of growing food in a monocrop culture kind of way, we aren't getting the kind of nutrients that we once were from our food. So when you have the ability to wild forage, I truly believe that you're able to get more nutrients from your food than you're getting from even the organic stuff that you're buying for crazy money in the store. So to recap, I showed you guys cleavers. Cleavers was that cool thing that you could just um, to check to be sure that you're identifying cleavers. You could just toss it onto your shoulder and see if it sticks to your clothes or in your hair. That's cleavers. I showed you guys miner's lettuce. Miner's lettuce you can eat and it's great in salads. I also showed you guys dandelions, which you can eat as well and you can use for all kinds of different applications. Uh, we had broadleaf and narrow leaf plantain. Uh, and then we also had the mugwort for dreams. Um, so that's it for now. If you guys found this video super helpful, I would appreciate it if you liked it, shared it. Uh, I also have a Patreon account. Uh, if you find that the content I share is super valuable and you want to donate to ensure that I'm still capable of creating content, that is well appreciated. Uh, another thing too is my friend uh, No Amy that I met up here in California. Her and I are gonna be going live tomorrow. And in our live discussion, we're going to be sharing some of our psychedelic journeys and gonna be speaking very candidly and vividly about our experiences. So please stay tuned for that tomorrow. 
yet again, thank you guys for hopping on this call. Please support my Patreon if you feel called to. And stay safe out there, guys. Um, it's crazy times, but I think we can make it through this. And I think this is going to be something that's going to bring us back to more self-reliance and uh, a stronger sense of community too, hopefully. So thanks again. I really appreciate your guys' time. You guys rock. Thanks so much. I love you all. Peace.